Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager for the Modal Shop. One of the most popular sensors used in industrial vibration applications is the GE Bentley Nevada Trendmaster series. We often find this in balance of plant, pumps and motors. Uh, it's a very reliable sensor and there's a few different models within the series. In this video I'm going to show you how to calibrate the Trendmaster model 2150. This is a 100 millivolt per G sensor with a reference frequency of 80 Hertz, which is unusual because most reference frequencies in the industrial market are 100 Hertz. They allow a plus or minus 12% tolerance at 80 Hertz and plus or minus 10% tolerance off of that measurement at all other frequencies in the range. The frequency range is 10 Hertz to 1000 Hertz. So I've set up my model 9110D portable vibration calibrator to give me a pass fail on plus or minus 15%. Now you may say, wow, those those specifications are pretty lax, but this is a very good sensor. GE Bentley Nevada makes high quality instrumentation, and as you're gonna see in this video, it's going to outperform its specification. Now this is a, uh, about a five volt DC sensor, so we're gonna use the USB power on top of the shaker to power it. And for that, we've created a new model. Its model number is 9100-TMCBL. And it's a cable slash power supply that makes it very easy to test these transducers there's no way to uh, wire it up incorrectly. It has a USB uh, connection, a BNC that goes to the test sensor input or your voltmeter, and the Bentley Nevada five pin connector um, to connect to the sensor. And this connector does have a keyway, so it can't be connected incorrectly. And with this equipment, we can begin the test. So I've mounted my sensor on top of the shaker, and I have already programmed my um, pre-programmed test or Cal route for this Bentley Nevada Trendmaster 2150. My expected uh, sensitivity is 100 millivolts per G and at 10 Hertz and 0.8 G's I'm getting about 100 millivolts per G. So this is my first test point and if I want to save it to memory I just hit the file button to save that point. Now you can see the shaker tells me that that sensor uh, that test point passes based on my tolerances that I set. So I set a plus or minus 15% tolerance, which is actually tighter than the specification for this transducer. And you can see that my sensitivity is between um, 85 and 115 millivolts per G. So my sensor passes at this point. My next test point is 30 Hertz at one G peak. And you can see the sensitivity is 105 millivolts per G, which again is going to pass. And now I can move relatively quickly through the points. I wait for the amplitude to stabilize on 1G and at 50 Hertz it's 105 millivolts per G which again is within tolerance. At 80 Hertz and 1G my sensitivity is again 105 and I pass as well. So this is an 8 point test. Here's the test point at 100 Hertz 104 millivolts per G 200 Hertz 1G peak 104 millivolts per G Seventh test point, 400 hertz, 1G peak, 103 millivolts per G. And each time I press a button, I'm saving these points to memory for the purpose of creating a calibration certificate in Microsoft Excel. Final test point is 1000 hertz at 1G peak, and you can see my sensitivity of 101 millivolts per G. And again, it tells me that I pass. At the end of the process, the model number is already imported in. I can use these, uh, these keys here to enter in a uh, serial number as well, but I'll go ahead and skip that and save the record to the memory of the shaker. The calibration certificate is very easy to make in Microsoft Excel. There's no need to type in any data and there's no need for additional software. Only three clicks of the mouse are required to make a frequency response calibration certificate for this GE Bentley Nevada 2150 Trendmaster accelerometer and that calibration certificate is NIST traceable and ISO compliant as it meets the ISO 16063 standard part 21 for back-to-back -back sensor calibration for piezoelectric vibration sensors. But not every plant needs to keep track of calibration certificates. Sometimes you just want to make sure that the sensor is working and you don't need our more advanced model 9110 to do that. The model 9100D, typically used for loop checks or safety instrumented systems, is perfectly acceptable for this application. The 9100D 
program with an automated test and a voltmeter may be enough to get you by in this application. That is to make sure that the sensitivity of the transducer is within specification at all of your required uh, speeds and test points. So let's show how to do that using the 9100D and a separate voltmeter. When using our model 9100D, you can perform a quick check of the accelerometer just using a voltmeter. Here I have my Fluke 87. I'm shaking at 1 G RMS at 30 Hertz and I'm reading 105 millivolts AC, which means my sensitivity is 105 millivolts per G as I just divide by 1 G RMS. And you can see that at 105, we are certainly well within the tolerance for this sensor. At 50 Hertz at 1 G RMS, my sensitivity is still 106. At 80 Hertz, 1 G RMS, back to 105. At 100 Hertz, 1 G RMS, 104. And I'm just advancing from point to point simply by moving the frequency dial one click in a clockwise motion. 200 Hertz, 1 G RMS. So this is very helpful for repetitive testing. If you have to test a lot of these Trendmaster sensors, you can do so relatively quickly. Last test point, 1000 Hertz. This is the high end of the range and 102 millivolts per G. So I can see if I'm troubleshooting this transducer that my sensitivity is within tolerance at every point. So as you can see, the model 9100D is ideal for system testing, loop checks, could be part of a safety instrumented system, things like that. And if you're uh, using the ProTim modules, then they're probably integrating the signal from this Bentley Nevada GE Trendmaster sensor down to velocity. And of course, you can shake in velocity and do a direct comparison there between the value on the shaker table and the value in your condition monitoring system, making sure that alerts and alarms trip at the right threshold points. Thanks so much for watching. For more information, including videos on how to program automated tests into our calibrators or how to test Bentley Nevada proximity pro probes, please visit our website at modalshop.com. We'd like to remind you that all of our calibrators uh, are, are shipped with an A2LA accredited calibration certificate, and of course, they're NIST traceable. And our calibrators are available through our sister company, PCB Pizatronics, as model 699A06 and 699 AO7. Thanks again.